All right, buddy, welcome to the show. I got an awesome one for you today. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube instead of listening to it in podcast fashion, you can see um, regular schmegular brown hair Kyle is back, at least temporarily, at least temporarily. Um, I, I put it back to brown just for the wedding because, you know, if the blonde hair thing is a phase, I don't want to look back and be like, hey, remember that phase where I had slim, shady uh, blonde hair? Uh, so eliminated it for the wedding. But look, I got to be honest with you guys, I kind of like the blonde better. So right after the wedding, I'm probably going to go back. It's also less maintenance, by the way. Um, believe it or not, I know it sounds like counterintuitive, but look, my hair is like white dog. Gray, white, I don't know. It, it, somewhere in, <laughs> in the general vicinity of gray and white. And to keep it this color, I actually have to dye it more often. When you do the bleach blonde thing, it just like it just stays longer. So anyway, Slim Shady Kyle will make a return. Um, not digging the brown, but doing it for the wedding. Uh, but enough about uh, my personal fashion decisions. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive into what we have for today. So um, got an amazing new poll that just came out on Trump and Biden. And the numbers are astonishing because you really get a sense of just how much these people are despised, yet also how big of a favorite they are for the next election. It's really disappointing. It almost reminds me of 2016 with Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. We're seeing like a similar trend, similar numbers. People don't like them, but at the same time, they're still like leading by a mile and a half. We also have the pro-life people have now turned on Donald Trump. Lindsey Graham throws a tantrum live on air and Elon Musk humiliates himself when it comes to uh, Twitter and the Blue Verify program. All right, so we'll dive into it in just a second, but quick shameless plugs for everybody. Everybody do me a, a favor and click like on the video, subscribe to the channel. We hit that 1 million sub number trying to get to 2 million subs. You can only build it one at a time, so if you can hook a brother up, if you watch this channel on a regular basis, might as well just click that subscribe button as well. Click that bell icon so you get a notification every single time a video drops. And remember, guys, you can always listen to the full shows in podcast uh, fashion over on Spotify. So we post the full shows every time we do a show over on Spotify. Um, and there's been more and more people going over there to listen to the show that way. So if you'd like to, uh, go right ahead and support the show on Patreon, link in the video description box below and support the show on, or support Crystal Kyle and friends on Substack. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it here. So NBC news just did a new poll. Um, here's the headline. Nearly 70% of GOP voters stand behind Trump amid indictment. So think about that. This sort of verifies what, you know, we've we've witnessed over the past however many weeks that there was a real circling of the wagons that happened when Trump got indicted. His numbers went up, and in fact, they went up substantially. They say a whopping two-thirds of Republican primary voters say they stand behind former President Donald Trump and dismiss concerns about his electability, despite his recent criminal arrest and other legal investigations into his past conduct, a new national NBC News poll finds. Now, by the way... The, to the concern about electability here, um, that's real. That's real. Because the general election polls have him doing abysmally. In fact, his overall favorability rating in the last poll that I saw was 25%. 25%. That is, that's lower than it was immediately after January 6th. So he's getting stronger in the Republican primary, but worse in the general election. That, along with his double-digit lead over his nearest potential GOP rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, makes Trump the clear frontrunner in the early race for the Republican presidential nomination. The Republican Party's continued enthusiasm for Trump stands in contrast to an anxious nation's displeasure with how the 2024 race is shaping up. Substantial majorities of all Americans don't want Trump or Joe Biden to run for president in 2024, setting up a potentially divisive and uninspiring general election rematch between the two men, with Biden expected to launch his re-election bid in the coming days. So, l look at these polls. Uh, which statement comes closer to your view on the investigations into Donald Trump and the Republican nomination for president? They are politically motivated attempt to stop Trump. No other candidate is like him. We must support him. That's 68% of the Republican primary field says that. It is important to nominate a candidate who will not be distracted and can beat Joe Biden. In other words... That's the electability thing, right? Like, should you pick a candidate who's electable, who can win a general election? Only 26% of Republican primary voters agree with that. Okay, now we get to 
This gets more and more embarrassing as we go here. So here's the Republican primary field overall. Trump at 46%, Ron DeSantis at 31%. This one is actually a little bit of, of a better poll than other ones I've seen. Some polls have Ron DeSantis at about 23%, which is significantly less than this. But still, Trump with a giant lead nonetheless. Um, do you think Joe Biden should run for president? No. 70%. 70%. Yes is only 26%. That's a devastating poll for Joe Biden. Devastating. For those who don't want Joe Biden to run for president, how much of a reason is age? 48% say it's a major reason, 21% say minor, and 29% say not a reason. So a plurality say his age is a major reason. Now, look, to be fair... I don't think, me personally, I don't think age matters that much as long as you're sharp and still with it. The problem with Joe Biden is that he's not sharp and not with it. And I think people can see that. And so now you see 70% of the country is like, don't run, Joe. Don't run. Wow. Now, look, in a world that made sense, this number would be, you know, shouted from the rooftops. It'd be on every uh, major media outlet. They'd make a big deal about it. And by the way, the media could also give fair coverage to Joe Biden's opponents, Marianne Williamson, RFK Jr., whoever else may happen to jump into the race. But I'm not going to hold my breath for that because there's this sense that they give, this, this feeling of inevitability to Joe Biden winning. And on the one hand, I understand it because incumbent presidents have a gigantic advantage. But on the other hand, if there was anybody whose gigantic advantage might mean nothing ultimately, it would be Joe Biden given all the factors around him. So uh, now, Donald Trump is not faring much better. Do you think Donald Trump should run for president? No, 60%. Yes, just 35%. Nobody wants these people. Again, what this reminds me of is all of the polling right before Trump versus Hillary, where it was like, oh, we hate this person. Oh, we hate this person. Really, this is the best option that we have? Oh, this is terrible. And then they ended up, of course, winning their respective primaries, and um, that was the general election. And I will say, there is part of me, too, that looks at this and is kind of angry at, i got to be honest, just the population of the country. Because this happens all the time now. It's like, God, we hate this person so much. They're so terrible. They're the worst. And every poll reflects that, and then it's like, are you going to vote for them? Yeah, I'm going to vote for them. 41% say they'd vote for Biden in a general election. 41%. Now, that's kind of a low number, but also remember, I just read you a poll that said 70% of the country is like, hey, Joe, don't run. All right, so um, then they go on here. Biden's job approval falls. Jesus. In April of 2021, he had a 53% approval rating, and now it's all the way down to 41%. Uh, and this poll apparently goes into everything. They have a poll here on abortion. 58% say abortion should be legal. But that's what I really wanted to highlight for you. The Trump versus Biden portion of it. People hate them, yet they're still leading. Um, they're winning by quite a bit. And part of me wants to blame the people for that because it's like, enough already. If, if you're so convinced this person shouldn't run, then have your voting patterns reflect that. But then again, on the other hand, it always comes back to the media because... The media would really need to give Biden's opponents a, a fair shot, and they haven't. They haven't given them fair coverage. They haven't given them almost any coverage whatsoever, um, and that helps bring about this environment. Now, when it comes to Trump, it's not like they're giving Trump positive coverage, but they do cover him relentlessly, and the fact that they cover him relentlessly, there's a little bit of a backlash effect where it just makes the Republican voters fall in line and support him more. So, I mean, imagine this is every election for the rest of our lives. It's like every time we have an election, everybody's like, I hate these people, and I'm going to vote for them. <laughs> it's, it really is, uh, you know, it shows you how broken our politics are when the facts are the on the ground are this absurd. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.